Hello, welcome back to my daily coverage of the Silk Road Mountain Race. This is day three. So let's head over to Map Progress and see what's been going on over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Um, so the we're on to the third day now. So the, the race is starting to take some kind of structure. There's always riders that um, probably go out too hard and are up in the top 10 and then kind of fade backwards and I think we're beginning to see that the names I'd expect to be uh, near the front in the top 10 uh, are there uh, on the whole and um, there's a few new names as well so we can see uh, we've got a new leader so Tom Schwemberger he's he's been up up and around the front the top five since the start but he seems to have taken the lead um, and it's, it's marginal at the moment it's all very close um, so there's there's 10k just about just over 10k um, within like for the, for the first four riders uh, marin's another 5k back so 15k it's uh, is very minimal at this this time especially on this particular race which is particularly hard i suspect everyone or everyone in that sort of front group has um just resupplied in bait off well i know 100 percent they will have resupplied at bait off because there's nothing else really to supply resupply there um local time here is about three o'clock uh, so they're going to be about 9 p.m um some riders may may opt to sleep here. Um, I don't know if Marin's moving at the moment, but it would be sensible uh, to have a, an early light in, in a guest house before going up onto uh, over the next climbs. The next section is high elevation, so um, they basically they're going to be about three thousand meters for the next well, probably the next um, eight hundred, two hundred, three four hundred k. Um, so there's going to be a good chunk of, 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 of elevation. Uh, I know this because I went there last year. Last year on the race, um, I managed to sleep above 3,000 meters for five nights out of the seven hours on the trail. Um, it's, it's it's not too bad, but obviously you're going you're gonna to recover much better lower down and higher up. There's a, a, a greater chance of some some weather coming in. Um, so yeah, I do wonder if if Marin um, he stopped 38 minutes ago. He might just be having a resupply, but it might be worth some people in, in this pack stopping at sort of nine ten o'clock and then starting again at two o'clock in the morning. Also, this valley is very hot, so um, that would be sensible doing the big climb that the the leaders are on now, Mel's Pass. Uh, but it's kind of one big long climb and then another little climb. Again, this is Kyrgyzstan little climbs. Probably still going to be half hour 45 minutes best part of an hour to get up the, the second bit and you can see then you just don't descend down you just got this long drag and it gets really cold up there it was minus six last year i slept at the um further along the road around here where my marker is um so so yeah it's uh it's definitely a cold section so riders this is where this is where the silk road um or planning and thinking on the silk road uh, comes into itself um so yeah the top five uh rufus uh, tom schwemberger in first rufus winlock in second uh ron russelman again i don't know much about him but he seems to be fairly strong and and staying up at the pointy end joe nation one of my pre-race favorites in fourth along with marin de saint expiry in fifth um vlad the local rider um really great to see him moving up into the top 10 he started slow and he's moving up and he's got local knowledge so just uh, you know make of that what you will Omar Martinello, first of the first checkpoint. Obviously, I think he went too too hard, um, in my opinion. Anyway, it looks like he's dropped a little bit. Um, and then Artis Zooks, a new name. Dan Marsmans, he was well up there early on. He looks to have faded a little bit. And Max Max Cherkasov, again, another local rider. And Angus Young, he's had a few issues, but he's coming back. Um, Hannah Simon, leading woman, also, um, she's doing amazing. So she's in 15th overall now. Um, and she seems to have got a bit of a gap over second place female Emma Mizale. They were very close yesterday, but it seems like she's broken away a little bit. Um, so before I go any further, um, as you all know, Redshift are supporting my coverage on, on the races. Um, so big thanks to those guys. Um, I've actually just fitted these kitchen sink handlebars to one of my other bikes, um, and I'm actually very impressed. Um, give you a nice little aero option. I, it'd probably be a good thing for the Silk Road where you don't really need a full um, aero setup, but it, it is good to have those different hand positions and be able to sort of get down on the bars there. And these, um, the drop bar grips, the uh, they're, they're really, really good actually, very comfortable. Um, so yeah, big shout out to, to Redshift, and I've got a discount code um, in the description below. So uh, check that out and also all the other people that support me and uh and the channel um there's links to all of that below um so yeah thank you to redshift uh so let's have a little look on Ryber gps um i'll put the wind on this really useful new layer um the other the other new layers have got air quality snow depth usl coverage but obviously they only work in the usa so they're not much use to us here but the wind 
Um, as you can see, the riders at the moment have got, well, most of the riders, if we go back to the tracker, uh, the most of the sort of the top 20 or so are on this section here. Um, so they're going to have a, well, a banging tailwind. Um, the other riders on the other side of the mountains, not so much. Um, so it's going to be a big headwind for the vast majority of the field at the moment, but you know, it should swift, uh, switch round. This section though, it's, um, it's not great to be fair. It's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's very hot in that valley. Um, last year it was over 30 degrees, uh, very windy and um, it's just really rough. Now I've got a bit of video from last year. Now bear in mind last year uh, I was traveling in the opposite direction but this video gives you a pretty good idea of what the riders are experiencing. Um, this was, I think it was James, James Hayden. We, we, we resupplied him beat off. He was having a bit of a bad time. I caught him here and then he dropped me again later on in the day. Um, energy levels come and go but you can see the block, block headwinds on the flag there and these roads are rough washboarded um, this bit's one of the better bits uh, further further along on this um, on this section out here uh, there's nothing out there at all um, there's a few small villages but not much uh, maybe a few farms and some irrigation pipes I think it's an old kind of Soviet there's loads of old Soviet ruins it's it's pretty cool pretty cool place to go but yeah the, the gravel can get quite deep it's quite frustrating you're just not you're not going fast um, and especially with a headwind um, obviously these guys are going to be going slightly downhill but they would have had the slight uphill going the other way um, so yeah it's a it's a slow section it's a hot section there's not much in the way we resupply you can see the shops here basically they've got to try and resupply Kazaman and then you can't really count on that much till Beethoven. Um so that's what uh, 356 miles and Beethoven 458 so 100 miles basically with minimal stuff and and high temperatures there are a few irrigation canals I think I filled up my bottles out of one last time probably a bit sketchy you got to use a lot of chlorine um but i didn't get ill so it must have been okay a uh, small shop here um but by that point you basically if you've got water and food you might as well just go on to beethoven and get a proper resupply where there's hotels and things like i said a lot of the riders on this stretch i suspect will stop in beethoven if you get into 10 11 o'clock at night definitely stop there um because it'll be really cold up high and you you're on one of the lowest points of the whole race um, so you want to try and um, sleep low when you can. Um, so the, the the riders are currently on Mel's Pass. You can see um, see here there were well, the top four on Mel's Pass. This the road up Beethoven is a drag. It's a, it's a drag and it's um, deep gravel again. It was hard riding down it. It's going to be a drag going up to it, and then you get onto the pass. So the pass itself, um, you basically wind your way up it's going to be a good couple of hours riding um so again this is me going over the top and starting the sort of main descent last year um you can see it's, it's it's fairly well driven so it's not too bad um for a gravel track to ride up maybe a few looser sections on some of the the hairpins where the stones got thrown out but in a second you'll see um you'll see that ridge in the background that's where the riders in the valley will be riding to and then bait off is that green patch just in the far distance and you can see the road winding all the way down the valley um, so it's a long old climb just the scale of the landscaping in Kyrgyzstan is is incredible um, I, I can't wait to get out there myself to be honest um, so yeah that's what the riders will be doing at the moment and then they're heading up onto this high plateau I'll show you a video of that tomorrow when the riders are up there heading towards CP3 on Kel Su which I'll get to tomorrow this is going to be a drag um, it's just high elevation and I suspect I suspect storms can come in quite quickly like I said um, it's going to be sensible to sleep lower if you can um, and this race is, is so close so if, if these lead riders get up here and get caught in a storm and a few riders in this chase pack decide to sleep in bait off have a good night's sleep they could close a gap like that very very quickly so people like angus um who's had his sickness and gear problems we'll get onto that in a second he could he could be well in the mix still um so yeah very early days still on the silk road mountain race to put it into perspective last year i was probably on the edge of the top 10 a good chunk of the race and then the final checkpoint was at sol cool where um cp1 cp1 was this year uh, and it was it was two days basically to the finish. We went roughly on this route over Kagetti and then along um, on the bonus climbs um, as the race will finish this year. I was in um, I, I was in tenth or eleventh, maybe in twelfth when I got to that checkpoint, um, and I started the day in fifth um, because people were sleeping and it just catches up with people. Um, and as it was, I finished seventh. Um, 
but only within a couple of hours. I just ran out of legs on the last day. So my point is, it's all to play for um, and early days still. So yeah, really exciting. It's going to be close racing by the looks of it. Um, let's go over to some social media because you're probably fed up with me just banging on about how tough it is. Um, so this is Tom Schwenberger. He's our, our new race leader. Like I said, I don't do, know too much about him, but I found his, his Instagram. Um, so yeah, let's see what he says. Forecast was wrong, but it's not heavy rain and apparently I am now in the lead. That's fun. Two and a half more hours of pedaling. That's what I've told myself. So yeah, it looks like rain last night. Well, morning of day three, and I decided to uh, get myself a little birthday present. The lead. Hell yeah. Alrighty. See how long I can keep it. Well, like packing 101, find a way. My uh, positive battery terminal on the ETAP stopped making a connection. Fucking SRAM. So I improvised a spring out of the contact from a USB port. Bowl shifting again! Woohoo! So that was Tom, obviously uh, found out he's in the lead um, and it's his birthday so he's going to be in a very high <laughs> spot of high motivation. Um, let's see see how it goes um, further into the race and he also had some some issues with his SRAM axis. Um, I'm not, I, I kind of like it but I don't. It, it, it's a great idea but I've just, it just seems to be too unreliable. We've seen this Dinas Leveca have issues, even Lachlan Morton on the Tour Divide. Just seems to be unpredictable um, in kind of extreme conditions. Um, Apart from that, it's great, but I, to be honest, I just wouldn't trust it. I think I'd rather run a um, um, just an XT, Shimano XT with a cable. Um, but yeah, each to their own. Uh, but it sounds like he's fixed it. It sounded like a terminal terminal problem. Um, now on to Angus, who has had um, SRAM axis shifting problems. So, quick update. Um, still haven't quite got over the dodgy stomach. Um, but that's not my biggest concern. My uh, battery and my uh, axis shifter went, which I didn't think was gonna, it was annoying. Um, I didn't think it was gonna be too much of an issue. So carry a spare, as you'd expect. Um, however, the spare, when I put it in, uh, didn't fancy working. So now I'm stuck in my easiest gear spinning away um yeah so yeah angus uh, his battery ran out in his shifter um yeah angus his battery ran out in his shifter stuck in his easiest gear to be fair it's better to be stuck in your easiest gear in kyrgyzstan than your hardest gear i don't think he would have lost too much time and if anything you know he's coming back from sickness on that first day at least he can um spin his legs and save some energy i, th I think that will pay itself back later on he's, he's definitely not out of it um, so yeah, just just keep an eye on Angus. He's he's incredibly strong um, when he gets a clean run. Um, so yeah, I, I've got a feeling he's going to come back and be pushing the top five by the end of this. If if he uh, if he you know if he if he fully gets over the sickness, so let's keep an eye on him um, and let's see what his resolution was for the um, uh, for the shifter. Um, the yeah, it was the actual coin cell in the shifter um, that was gone. Um, and the back of the spare one took the place, not very, very much, very much was fine. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I managed to spin my way towards Kazaman for an hour or so, and then remember that you can change the app, change the phone on the app. The, um, the on the app um, anyway, the, I managed to grab us some coins out of the uh, anyway, So we are back. That was a while ago. Anyway. Tummy is uh, still not 100 percent but like legs are working. I'm not doing really very good. Anyway, two lots of six hours sleep. So yeah, that's Angus. So it turns out it was just the the battery in the um, uh, in the in the handlebar shifter, um, and his spare wasn't working. Um, well, all I'll say in the matter is if he had Shimano XT. Uh, with a cable then he wouldn't have had to worry about the battery <laughs> there we go um so let's let's now head over to the official silk road mountain race um 
Instagram. They always put some amazing images. They have great photographers. Um, so it looked like the weather turned on Kigeti for the, the sort of second half of the pack. Um, yeah, obviously when you're up high, rain is going to be cold, could be snow. Um, didn't look like it's snow, but yeah, just can be miserable. Um, so this is Mel Webb and her husband, Jake, and this is actually their honeymoon. So they're celebrating their honeymoon by walking up a big mountain in Kyrgyzstan in the rain. Uh, so congratulations, guys. Um, and also listen to Detour's pe- podcast if you don't. That's that, These guys run that, um, which is cool to listen to. Talk to some really cool people on there. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of rain. Um, but then you, you can cross a mountain and it, it can be dry. Um, so yeah, very changeable in Kyrgyzstan. Um, I think when I when I climbed Kigeti last year from the side these guys would have descended, I think it started hot, then it rained for about five minutes and then it was warm again and then it was nearly snowing at the top. So anything can happen in a couple of hours. Um, but yeah, lots of pushing. Um, and, you know, you'll be amazed where these little cars can get to. Um, in, in, in Europe, we probably have some kitted out four-wheel drive, but they just have one of these old old cars and they just bounce along the tracks and they can get sort of up to all the high passes, um, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, also, there's this is a nice little reel they put out, and um, this gives you an example of, of some of the resupply you might expect and, and on Silk Road. Uh, this yeah. is Rufus, um, he's in second at the moment. So yeah, it's all about sign language. Uh, uh, yes. Pointing, <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> see where you're going from a long way out oh what a find that is the dream oh his his mate boy has dropped his bottle oh that's his bottle he's dropped he's going back down again very annoying but yeah like in Kyrgyzstan you don't need much in the way of GPS there's not many turns and you can normally see the road you're going for a good number of hours but it's normally just uphill for ages as you can see here um so yeah, that is a nice little reel from the guys um on the Silk Road race um and then finally um so this was heading down from Songkul, really hot valley um this is a long climb you can see what i mean you can just see where you're going for miles and miles and miles um it's just it's, it's just amazing absolutely amazing um you can see here perfect example of the roads you can see that how deep the gravel is you can see actually there's kind of like two ridges where the the wheels of, of cars and trucks have sunk into the gravel if you get off of that you almost stop instantly and you you washboard all over the place um, so it's tough riding um, when you least expect it as well. So um, yeah, that is uh, that's Kyrgyzstan. Um, so yeah, that's that's day three on the Silk Road Mountain Race. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe uh, if you haven't done already, and then you won't miss any of these because um, I know it's what you wait for every single day. And uh, I'll catch you again tomorrow for the next one. So thanks for watching.